So the mock drafts have been pretty generous to DeAndre Hunter. A wing who could be a three, could be a four. Has potential to defend a lot of positions in the NBA. Could be a rim protector. A guy who can defend on the ball, defend the low post, be effective in uh, transition defense and help defense and all that stuff. And then offensively, the hope is that he can do enough as a creator, as a three-point shooter to just be kind of like a Danny Green, Robert Covington kind of player. I guess Covington could be a better uh, hope just because of the size. So let's talk about all this. Um, The physical gifts of Hunter are definitely something to be excited about. I mean, 6'7", with a 7'2 wingspan and 225 pounds while being a pretty good athlete. That does show off some Draymond potential. Even so, we shouldn't expect anybody to be Draymond Green, but in terms of what you would need to do it, Hunter at least passes that test. Now, another important part of that is can you secure rebounds? And Hunter, he's a good rebounder, no doubt. And totally good enough if you want to play him at the three. But when you start moving him to the four position, I do think there's a chance that he could get a little overwhelmed physically. Now, there's certainly a chance that he could be an amazing rebounder in the NBA. But I don't think he did enough in college to prove that you don't have to worry about that. Now, the other thing is, can he play small ball five, right? And if if you want to do that, then you definitely need to uh, impress as a rebounder. And, I mean, Draymond, while the Warriors can get attacked on the offensive board sometimes, Draymond does hold his own enough as a rebounder, and I don't think Hunter is there right now. So I guess that step one is proving how good of a rebounder he can be, which could allow his defensive versatility to go to another level. And then you start talking about him as a, a potential all-defense guy, but but he's got to get there first. The second thing is we don't know for a fact if he can switch onto point guards right now, or at least maybe the top third of the point guards in the NBA, which is really how you uh, be an effective defender, because if you're a guy who can defend on a Wednesday against some random team, but you can't switch onto, let's say, Kyrie or Dame or even someone like uh, Drew Holiday, then you're not really a great defensive player. You can still be a good one and one who can make a positive impact, but definitely a difference there. So is he quick enough and all that stuff to defend some of the smaller dudes? The other thing is he wasn't through the roof with his steals, which... I think is maybe a little frightening. Now, at the same time, through doing some digging, it does seem that um, the college that he was at, their defensive game plan was one that wouldn't lead to a lot of steals or whatever. That's just things that other people on the internet have said. So there's that. But even so, you would hope that against college-level talent, the guy could at least average a steal a game. Because, you know, it certainly helps you. Remember, we saw Iguodala strip... Dame in the very last possession of a game that was within like four points or whatever. So if you can't do that stuff semi-regularly, that is going to knock down your defensive potential a bit. But I will admit this is a little bit of nitpicking because in terms of defensive foundation, I would say the top like three guys for that in this draft, number one would be Zion. Two is Brandon Clark, and then three is probably DeAndre Hunter. So there's certainly reason to be excited about what the guy can do there. As far as offense is concerned, you know, the form looks good enough to make threes. His off-the-dribble game has actually kind of improved to the point where maybe he could attack closeouts and occasionally uh, go at somebody if it's a pretty big mismatch, but... I think that's going to take a little while, and if it doesn't happen at all, I wouldn't be too uh, wouldn't be too surprised about it either. So anyway, now we get to the fit with uh, these teams, as always, starting at number four, 
And as always, on top of the other as always, don't know if the Lakers are actually going to be using their pick. So, DeAndre Hunter, if he ended up on the Lakers, would be another guy for their big defensive team that can defend a whole lot of positions. I kind of believe the Lakers could be a top something defense next season, top five, top seven, whatever. Because, uh, you know, between Lonzo, Ingram, and everything, and Vogel now is the coach, and then if you want to put Hunter in here, that's another guy who can switch a few positions. And, you know, the Lakers were trying really hard to find themselves a small ball five last year. And I don't know if Hunter's good enough to do that right now, but he's certainly a better candidate than everybody they got. So that's a thing. He also might be their best option for defending power forwards because Lonzo's great at guards. Ingram, he's gotten stronger, but I don't think he's there just yet. LeBron doesn't play defense much anymore. And Kuzma is a little too inconsistent, whereas I think Hunter could step in right now against bigger wings and be pretty good for the Lakers. So that would be nice. And then on offense, he could just get open shots from LeBron and Lonzo. So, yeah, I think that could be cool. Their good defense could lead to transition opportunities for him. Cleveland, DeAndre Hunter. I mean, I could picture them going with Culver or Garland. Not Garland, but Culver definitely if they want more potential on offense. And Culver can be a pretty good defender as well. I don't think he's at Hunter's level on defense, but... I think Culver can certainly be good there. And of course, offense is more important than defense. So maybe Culver would be a better option for Cleveland. But at the same time, maybe they just really like the idea of Hunter. And uh, it would be cool to see Kevin Love at center with DeAndre Hunter at power forward. So that's an idea. Phoenix could certainly use a multi-position defender. But they do have a lot of wings, and maybe it would be better for them to take a guard. That's about all I got, really. I do think if they selected Hunter, though, they could make it work. Because I I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of wings, but a lot of them kind of suck. Like, Josh Jackson sucks. Oubre had moments. I still don't like him as much as TJ Warren or DeAndre Hunter, really. And Mikhail Bridges. So I just, I feel like you can have a solid, like, rotation of Hunter at the four, Warren at the three... Bridges, I guess, is the guy off the bench. Like, I think you can make that work, especially if you want to go Devin Booker at point guard. Um, Chicago, they do have a lot of forwards. I mean, Otto is, like, kind of already their small ball four dude. But I guess for everything I just said about Phoenix, I guess you could say the same thing here. Like, maybe you could go with a lineup that's, like, uh, marking it at the five, Hunter at the four, Porter at the three, but even then that wouldn't really start because you'd still want um, Wendell to be starting games. So maybe it could work, maybe it wouldn't work. I mean, I don't know. There's also potential for Hunter at the four and Wendell at the five. So there's definitely versatility there, but maybe they just really need a point guard who's not Chris Dunn starting. Next we go to Atlanta. So it seems John Collins is a power forward. He played power forward pretty much this whole season. Like, all of his minutes were next to Dwayne Dedman or Alex Len, for the most part. So, if they're set on him being a four, then if you were going to draft Hunter, you'd have to be really confident that either both of them can become shooters, or at least one of them can be really good and the other one can at least be solid. And there's reason to believe they both can be above average. And, of course, because you have Trey Young and Kevin Herter, you're always going to have some sort of spacing going on. But it might be possible that even with those two in your backcourt, that Hunter and Collins both just being kind of meh shooters and you still have a center playing with them, that could kill the spacing a little too much. So, I don't know. That's the kind of thing where you'd really have to look at their forms and project how good they'll be years from now and you know if Atlanta's confident in their development then I guess that's something they could go to of course Torian Prince is still there so that might throw a monkey wrench into everything I just said 
Uh, and, you know, then from there, we're looking at Washington and, uh, yeah, it'd be cool, I guess. Uh, he would certainly make sense for the T-Wolves because they just need a lot of 3 and D guys around towns and hopefully Wiggins doesn't suck. Yeah, it's going to do it. DeAndre Hunter seems cool and that's all I got.